Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all continuing to keep safe and well. Here in the UK, lockdown has been eased a bit more. All the non-essential shops are now open with social distancing and hygiene measures in place, of course. And on public transport, we have to use face coverings now. Some of the schools have now opened up, although there's obviously a bit of confusion about which are opening, which are not, which kids are allowed back, all that kind of thing. That's still not really been quite nailed down. But basically, there is more activity out there these days. But like many disabled people and other people, I am perfectly happy staying at home and I'm keeping myself very busy here. There's a lot going on. There's a few little things I want to announce now at the top of this video just before I get into everything else. So if you've been following me this week, you will already have noticed, hopefully, that I posted an unboxing video for the new Def Leppard box set. They very kindly sent me a copy of their London to Vegas box set, which has two live shows in there, one from the O2 Arena, one from Planet Hollywood. They're amazing, but go and check out my um, unboxing uh, review post and video for that. Then a big thing that I'm doing this week is I'm pre-recording a panel discussion for an accessibility event at the end of the month. So the event is called CXCon, the Accessibility Edition. It's completely free to attend. It's taking place on Zoom on the 30th of June. It's taking place all day and I'm in the session at 10.20 a.m. Um, I'm on a panel led by James Moore from The Independent. He's disabled himself, so has written various articles about various disability issues. And we're joined by Vivek Gohill, who is a disabled gamer. He uses a wheelchair and is very passionate about assistive technology. And Matthew Johnston from ThoughtWorks, who is profoundly deaf. So we've got a range of disabilities discussing various barriers that we face when trying to use digital products and services, be it websites, apps, or any other things as well. So I'm really looking forward to that discussion with them. We've already had a little kind of preliminary meeting just to say hello, get to know each other. But we're going to pre-record our panel session this week, just in case there's any technical issues, retakes, that kind of thing. Thing. That's then going to be broadcast on the 30th of June at 10.20 and we're then going to be live for a Q&A immediately afterwards. So do come and watch us on that and do you know join in, ask some questions. That would be great to have your support there. Before that, on the 21st of June, this coming Sunday, it's the Aniridia Network Conference. This year we were going to have the European Conference, of course, in London, but that's fallen by the wayside due to the pandemic. So we're doing an online conference instead and we've got some great speakers in there. So I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Again, completely free and on Zoom. So if you have an interest in Aniridia, do sign up for that. And also the day before that is a nice Dagmas Awareness Day. So I'll put a link to the newsletter from the Nice Dagmas Network in the description below as well. So you can find out how to get involved with that. So that's all the stuff looking ahead, just to let you know about a few things that you might be interested in. But now let's go back and check out things that I've been enjoying and discovering over the past couple of weeks, because I've left it a fortnight this time. So there's various things I want to whip through in kind of a bullet point kind of basis really all the links will be in the description as usual and everything will be in the blog post going with this as well so if you want to know more about any of this then just hunt for the links you will find it there so first of all we're going to start with uh, various more disability things um, as there have been various articles and videos being posted that if you have any interest in disability you might want to check out so first of all in terms of articles um, Chloe Tear has written an article about why she's not ready to come out of lockdown yet that's quite an interesting insight into the way that disabled people are thinking at the moment some of us just still aren't feeling that comfortable we're not quite ready to go out yet Forbes magazine have posted a couple of articles recently that may be of interest one is about the effect of social distancing on blind people and one is about how the pandemic has proven the social model of disability so they're both quite interesting to look at the Research Institute of Disabled Consumers has conducted their third survey into the impact of the uh, pandemic and lockdown on disabled people. So that might be worth a look if you're interested to see what their findings are. And the RNIB have also posted some useful tips on interacting with people with sight loss to help them out during the current period. So that might be useful if you're not quite sure how to kind of interact with us at the moment. I've also contributed to a couple of articles as well, thanks to the charity Vocalize, who provide audio description support for museums and theatres, because I've been to many audio described shows and tours and things like that. And basically they consulted their user panel members, of which I am one, and their trustees, to kind of assess our feelings on how we might go back to museums and theatres as restrictions are lifted, as these places reopen again. And the general consensus is that many of us just don't feel safe doing so yet. You know, we'd rather still conduct these kind of things online for the time being because public transport doesn't feel safe to use for us, you know, because of the distancing involved and the risks involved and actually using the venues as well because of the distancing and would we be able to get any help we might need? Would there be accessible performances and tours and things like that? Or would they just be on hold until this is over? There's so much uncertainty. It just, just doesn't feel worth going anywhere, even when they open up initially. So it's going to be some time before many of us go back to museums and theatres I think which is a shame but there has been stuff online which has been great and hopefully maybe we can encourage 
those venues not to forget us so that they can still provide some kind of alternative offering online so that we don't miss out on all the interesting things they have to offer. And indeed, later this month, in fact, in a few days' time, I'm doing an audio description tour from an exhibition as well. So I will put that in the description below. It's a photographic kind of exhibition that a lady called Caroline is describing four of the photographs from. So that looks quite interesting. I thought I'd give that a go. And on the subject of the performing arts for the disabled, the theatre charity Grey Eye have also written an open letter to the culture secretary just to try and safeguard the future of disabled arts because obviously there are disabled performers out there, people who work in the theatre industry who are disabled. So it's important to make sure that everybody is protected from that angle as well. If you're into assistive technology, then the BBC have a position for an assistive technology tester up in Glasgow that may interest some of you if you're in that area. And if you want to see just what an impact putting assistive technology in place can have, then there's a viral video this week by blind gamer Steve Saylor who decided to check out the accessibility features on the Naughty Dog game The Last of Us Part 2. He knew there was quite a lot of accessibility features in there, but he wasn't prepared for just how many were in there. It's really quite something to see you know, a grown man reduced to tears because something is accessible. It seems strange to live in a world where that is a thing you know it should just be the norm that things are accessible but it does certainly emphasize the fact that you know this is why there are advocates out there who really do campaign hard for assistive technology to be put in place because it really is absolutely worth it and then if you're into more long-form videos there are a few that are about an hour each that you might want to check out AbilityNet have posted a video about working in the new normal with diversity and don't forget you can watch other webinars from AbilityNet as well on their channel they've done quite a few so far during lockdown the Thomas Pocklington Trust have had to go at their first webinar looking at assistive technology at home and at work so go and check that out and let them know if that was good for you because they will try and do more if they know there's interest in it. Sassy from Thinking Out Loud has done a video talking to some of her disabled travel blogger friends about their thoughts on the lockdown and how it's affected them and that lasts nearly an hour and a quarter so if you're into a long discussion like that then grab yourself a cup of tea and go and watch it. So they're moving on to theatre next and I saw the Old Vic's production of A Monster Calls that they published on their channel for a week. I saw this a couple of years ago with my good friend Claire in fact, so this is the second time I've seen it and it is really well worth seeing more than once because it's a fantastic production. I don't often go for things that are kind of tragic or sad in kind of the overall story but there is something really powerful and relatable to this in a way. It's about a teenage boy called Connor basically who is really struggling to come to terms with his mother's terminal illness and you know he kind of shuts himself away from other people and really struggles to deal with it himself. And to kind of help him face that fear that he has and to face the things he really doesn't want to do or say, this monster comes to Connor from a tree in his garden and tells him three stories, all of which seem to be unrelated to him initially. And at the end of those three stories, Connor has to tell a fourth story and it must be the truth. And the way everything comes together is really good. It's really well acted, really well staged and everything. And just really very, very moving. I defy anyone to watch it or to read the book or to watch the film that goes with it and not be moved by it. I still need to read the book or watch the film, in fact, but I will do both at some stage. It's not, you know, all sad. There is actually humour and light in there as well. They've actually got a good balance there. So it's not all depressing and horrible all the time. The score in there by Benji Bowers is good as well it's kind of really atmospheric and evocative music in there and he's posted a video all about how he came up with the music for the show which is really interesting to watch and there was also a pre-show talk as well on the old Vix channel which is all about how you know the show came to be and everything so they're interesting to watch and Benji Bowers has also released a soundtrack album on Bandcamp of the music for the show so I've downloaded that too because it helps to bring back memories of watching the show so I'm really glad they posted that again thank you to uh, the old Vic for doing that but then the old Vic are also doing another show that is audio described and captioned called Lungs and this stars Claire Foy and Matt Smith the latter being from Doctor Who of course and what's special about this is that they're actually performing it live from the old Vic stage but there's minimal people in the building there's no set there's no you know, fancy lighting or anything like that it's just the two of them doing a socially distanced performance performance from each other so you do have to go online and buy tickets for it i know there have been issues this is the first time the old vic have been doing this so when they do other productions i'm sure they'll kind of refine their purchasing process it may well be too late to buy tickets for lungs now but i just think it's worth mentioning because every single performance of this run is being audio described and captioned which is absolutely fantastic and I think that's what they meant when they said in reply to a tweet I sent them when they said they'd be doing all their main stage stream performances audio described. I assume that might have meant the recorded performances as well which would be nice to have but 
if they're just doing the live stream performances that they're doing via Zoom, then that's still fantastic that they're doing that anyway. So keep an eye on the Old Vic's website because they will be doing other shows and things, you know, both on the YouTube channel, maybe from their stage as well, if Lungs has gone well for them. And if you're looking for other theatre shows to watch as well, then The Guardian have a nice list of various shows coming up at the moment. Thank you to Claire for pointing that out to me. And there's also the Vocalise Interval newsletter and the official London Theatre page where they post audio described and captioned performances that they're aware of online as and when they appear. So keep an eye on those things too. And moving on to Blu-rays, because I've bought a few of them recently, I bought the Jumanji series, that's Jumanji and Welcome to the Jungle and The Next Level. I didn't bother watching the films again because I've just seen them online, but I did check out the extra features, they're good fun. And I also bought Sathura, A Space Adventure, that's the spin-off set in space from the series, so I got that on DVD to kind of complete my collection as well, that's a fun film too. I also bought Red Dwarf, The Promised Land, that's the feature-length special from that sitcom that was on this year. It's got the same extra features on there that were on UK TV Play, that's the documentary and deleted scenes and smeg-ups. Plus there's a bonus feature exclusive to the Blu-ray, which is an audience feature, so you get to see how they prepare to film the show in front of an audience, and you get the audience's reactions and things like that, so that's quite interesting as an addition as well. And then I also bought the series Police Squad on Blu-ray. I had it on DVD but I thought I may as well do the upgrade. It was coming out. And Police Squad is basically the prequel to Naked Gun. Naked Gun has come from that TV series. If you like the Naked Gun films you will love Police Squad because it's exactly the same daft silly humour with Leslie Nielsen. Uh, it's a great series. It's very very daft, very silly and it's brilliant because of it. So then moving on to comedy series on TV and online and my favourite over the past couple of weeks has been Staged featuring David Tennant and Michael Sheen. They're basically being asked to rehearse a play together while they're in lockdown. It just becomes a set of arguments and you know, misunderstandings and all that kind of thing. It's very very funny and they've got great chemistry the two of them as was already seen in Good Omens recently as well. So it's really funny. It's quite rude as well there is strong language in there but it is really funny and there's a couple of fantastic guest stars in there as well and um, one of the last episode I really was not expecting and it was just fantastic so I'm not going to spoil it but it's being shown on BBC One in chunks they did two episodes on the first week it was broadcast but all six episodes are available on the iPlayer so I just binge watched the whole lot they're only short episodes you know 15 to 20 minutes each so it's quite easy to get through them very quickly but I really enjoyed that that was very very funny so I'm glad they did that for uh, the lockdown and then another series of short but funny episodes, about 15 minutes each, is Comedians Home Alone. And this is a collection of sketches by various different comedians like Rhys James, Kerry Godleyman, Michael Spicer, Marcus Brigstock, Bob Mortimer and so on. Lots of funny little sketches there, um, all filmed in their homes during lockdown. It's just silly and fun, basically. That's all you can say about that. The online panel game Who Said That, which I've mentioned a couple of times before, that's still going strong. That's still very funny. I enjoyed the recent episode of Richard Osman in it. That was great to see him in that. And also online, uh, Taskmaster has now finished its set of home tasks that people were doing. For the time being, they are going to come back, they have said. But um, it's been great to see how creative people have been doing those different tasks. People have had a lot of fun doing them, which is fantastic. And in terms of other things that are finishing, and again involving Alex Horn, funnily enough, The Last Leg has finished its short little series, uh, Locked Down Under. It's been great to see them back. Alex Horn was setting them tasks as well, and with his horn section, they were playing uh, songs at the end of each episode as well. So we'll see The Last Leg back later in the year. They're coming back in time for the US elections. And then in terms of other current affairs series that have also finished, the news quiz on Radio 4 has also ended its current run that was hosted by Angela Barnes with various different people all recorded from their own homes again so there was lots of funny moments in that as they spoke about you know the different events in the news each week and they dealt with the serious issues very well too as did the last leg so you know there have been some very difficult things to deal with over recent weeks that comedy shows obviously just can't make jokes about in every respect so it's great that they've dealt with the serious issues head on as well and you know made people aware of what they need to think about which is fantastic and then in terms of stand-up comedy Jason Manford who has been very active on social media any way doing quizzes and chatting to people and being reassuring giving support and stuff like that he has donated his show muddled class to be broadcast on the bbc this hasn't been released on dvd so this is the only chance people have to see it it's on the iplayer as well and it's just basically a very very funny show you know he's always good doing stand-up and this is no exception and he's got some great general advice in there for people as well to give him a bit of a lift and a bit of reassurance and support as well so if you enjoy jason manford then do go and check out that show muddled class on the iplayer because that's really good fun and then i also watched an improv set by the Comedy Store players as well that was posted on the Comedy Store website just for a very small fee but I thought it was worth it 
that's got Paul Merton and Josie Lawrence and people like that in it. And I've been to the comedy store in person before, so I knew what kind of thing to expect. And yeah, it was very, very funny, very good. And they're doing other kind of stand-up comedy shows and things on their website. So if you like the comedy store, then do keep an eye on their website to see if anything comes up there that might interest you. And then if you like just cheesy jokes, silly one-liners, then there's a one-liner challenge that's been posted in support of the Heckle the Virus initiative with loads of different comedians all telling different jokes. So that's quite fun as well. I'll put a link to that clip in the description below and the fundraising page that goes with it. And then there have been various other comedy clips online as well. So Andrew Cotter's had another clip with his dogs from the Sporting Archives, he's called it, so he's made it look like old footage. Julie Nolke has done a sequel to her previous video where she explains the pandemic to her past self. It's a very funny sequel and also has a serious message in there as well. And Jim Dilakis, who I've mentioned before, has posted another video with some more breaking news, basically poking fun at the absurdities of stuff that we see in the media and from conspiracy theorists and all that kind of stuff. And then a friend of mine, thank you Pauline, she shared a video from the Bethany Baptist Church about what life might be like in church post-lockdown, you know, with all the distancing rules and everything else in place. So irrespective of whether you're religious or not, that's a funny video to watch too. Moving away from the comedy, just to quickly mention a couple of other series that are finished as well. Uh, the Flash has had its season six finale. They had to finish early because of the pandemic, of course. We didn't get quite the number of episodes that we should have. So there's quite a lot to wrap up still when they come back for season seven. So um, hopefully they'll be able to come back relatively soon whenever they can start filming again properly. And also the London Transport Museum series, Hidden London Hangouts, where they've gone to places like Euston and Aldwych and all sorts of other places, going behind the scenes to the secret areas that the public don't often get to see unless you're on one of their tours. And that series is finished for now as well but they have also promised they'll come back so that's worth looking through if you haven't seen those episodes yet so then as has often been the case with these videos let's finish with a quick roundup of some of the music videos that i found as well again all links will be in the description so i'll just rattle through these very quickly the holderness family have done what they've called a horrible parody medley and also a parody of the song summertime by jazzy jeff and the fresh prince called bummer time so that's um, very appropriate for lockdown while the kiffness have done a beatles parody called hey june to mark this month and then just to mention the horn section one more time as well they've produced an album of all their funny songs they've made during lockdown including all the songs they produced on the last leg so i've bought that off their Bandcamp page and i've bought their other albums as well i thought well, while i was there i may as well get the whole lot they're all very good all good fun and then in terms of theatrical stuff there's not been a lot that's caught my attention these past couple of weeks but the group stomp have done a special performance from their homes and if you know stomp you'll know they use boxes and bins and all sorts of random things to make their music but it always sounds great it always comes together very nicely and then in a very random but fun surprise the royal ballet dancers decided to make a video performing to living in a ghost town by the rolling stones that's the recent single they released which is great and they're not performing together they're all in their own individual locations but all the performances are edited together really nicely so that's good fun to watch so they're moving on to orchestral performances and there are a few people that my friend tina from america has mentioned to me so i just thought i'd pass them on to you as well they've all covered queen songs in one form or another which is kind of what drew our attention to them but there's also other songs they do as well that also sound great so it's worth digging through their channels to see what you find but there is two cellos and they've done a video of the show must go on there's hauser who has done a video for another one bites the dust and there's Lola Astanova who has done We Are The Champions. So thank you for Tina for recommending all of those channels. They're well worth looking through. Samara Ginsberg has performed some more TV theme tunes on eight cellos. That's where she records eight different parts herself on the cello and you see them all on screen at once. So most recently she's done Thundercats and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They sound really great. And the Ukulele Orchestra of Great Britain are still going as well. I've mentioned them before. They've done Thunderball and a few other bits and pieces as well. So they're also worth having a look at. And then in terms of singers, I want to give a special shout out to the Sing Out Choir from North London. They're a group of adults who are on the autism spectrum or who have learning difficulties and they recorded a beautiful version of Hey Jude together. So some of them recorded their parts online because they had the facility to do so and some of them had their parts recorded on the doorstep by someone recording at a distance because they didn't have the internet at home. So it was great that they were able to go around to people's houses and get all their different parts recorded like that and it's all been edited together really well. It sounds great. So yeah, thank you to Camilla for pointing that out to me. You all did a fantastic job and I'll keep an eye out for anything else that you happen to do. And then finally in terms of bands, I was delighted to see Madness doing a set online. That was a wonderful surprise. Suggs and Mike Barson got together with the London String Group. So they had a group of four players on strings behind them, all socially distant from each other, all obeying the rules. 
and they performed in this big lockup, and it sounded lovely with classic hits from Madness and a couple of new songs as well, which was lovely. And then the Doobie Brothers performed a lockdown version of their classic song, Listen to the Music. That was lovely. And then very randomly, the Venga Boys popped up out of nowhere as well, if you remember them from the 90s, and they performed a parody of one of their hits, calling it Zoom, 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 you know, in light of the current video calling craze at the moment. And then last, but by no means least, a group of performers, and there were some big names in there, got together under the name of Online Champions and Friends to perform a version of Driven by You by Brian May in support of Brian, you know, because he's been through a bit of trouble lately with his heart problems and everything else. So it was nice of them to kind of get together and do a special version of his song to give him a bit of a lift. And he was really chuffed by the surprise. He hadn't expected that at all. And that's it. That's the end of my long list for the past couple of weeks. I hope you enjoyed that and found things of interest within all that lot. My next post will be in a couple of weeks as per my new schedules. It just frees up my time nicely to do things every couple of weeks rather than every week. And there might be a slight delay that week when I'm due to do the next post because of my uncle's funeral and the accessibility event I'm going to but I will get a post out to you that week I'll have plenty of time to do so that's fine but yeah do come along to that accessibility event if you want to that's on the 30th CXCon link in the description below my section is at 10 20 British time and there'll be a live Q&A at the end of that session and then there's also the Anirija Network Conference on the 21st if that interests you and there's Nice Dagamas Awareness Day on the 20th if you want to celebrate that. So there's various bits and pieces coming up if you want to get involved with any of that kind of thing. But yeah, until next time, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. As always, please take care and stay safe if you are going out and about more these days. Or if you're staying in, then you know I hope you've got all the support and everything you need. And yeah, I will see you for another video very soon. Bye.